Hi, welcome back. Yes, I'm still alive. Um, sorry for the absence. Today I want to look at the game Shenandoah, 1975 from Battleline Publications. This is the second printing of the game, or at least the second printing of the rules. We have a nice cover here, um, depicting a classic uh, blue versus gray engagement. And what's inside the box? There's nothing on the back of the box, it's just blank. Might have had a cover sheet at some time, but um, that has long since disappeared. Inside, well, we get these, I don't know if these came originally with the game or not, but they're some sort of counter trays. I don't think I've seen anything like them before. And I've been into war games a long time. Anyway, they separate into two separate trays. And you just stack your units in there with no lid, but it's easy enough to um, create your own lid out of cardboard. And let's see, we have the rules. Civil War game of the Valley Campaigns, 1862 to 1864. The rule book is 32 pages long. It's a considerable amount. A lot of it is scenario, setup, special rules, optional rules, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, right there. This is where the optional rules begin on page 14, so I guess that's not too bad. I don't know if there's a basic or advanced game, but let's find out. Get to the index here. Well, there is no index. Um... No, it just kind of starts with the actual rule, so I'm guessing there's... I've never played this game, obviously. It's uh, still unpunched. Uh, no, there's just regular and optional rules. But, let's see. Let's look at the sequence of play real quick. Um, where are we at here? Introduction. Outline of play. Each scenario in Shenandoah consists of a certain number of turns. What do we have? Let's see if there's an actual... No, well, looks like I'm gonna have... Uh, you're gonna have to do it the hard way. So anyway, it looks like the player whose side moves first as determined in the individual scenario is defined now as the phasing player. His opponent's the non-phasing player. Let's see, the facing player should note on a scrap of scratch paper the number of movement allowance factors expended by units or stacks. Okay, well, I'm not sure. I'll have to dig around see if there's a better sequence of play. There's not one on the back. There might be one on the uh, player aid card. Anyway, you get rolls, black and white, uh, matte paper. And it comes with uh, a movement terrain effects card. And combat resolution tables. Looks like we have movement for mud and movement for dry weather. Units of infantry units, cavalry and partisan units, artillery and horse artillery units, wagon units, and general units. And your different costs stacking, unstacking, changing formation, moving in column. Moving in battle formation, that type of thing. Railroads, that's an advanced rules. What do we have here? Combat results, resolution tables. Fender strengths. So can bend this up a little bit. Park my shadows and all that type of stuff. Um, let's see. Tacker. Combat tables, defenders, combat tables, combat tables, multiplier, modifiers, and then the actual combat table itself. Looks like we have factor elimination, disorder, and mostly factor elimination and disorder. So that is the combat tables. Let's take a real quick look at the counters. <coughs> These puppies are thick. These are Yaquinto thick. I'm not sure if Battleline and Yaquinto 
were somehow related, i.e. one took over the other, or if it was the Avalon Hill that took over Battleline and Uquinto. Well, yeah, because Craig Taylor and Stephen Peak are part of Battleline, and I also thought they were part of Uquinto, but I could be wrong. Anyway, they have super thick bullet stopping counters. Um, pretty plain. I'm not sure what the nomenclature is on them. Looks like they have a combat factor and a movement allowance factor. The combat factor is on the left, movement on the right. Uh, obviously, these are the Union. The ones at the bottom are our leaders. And they have an. Their numerical rating is their movement allowance factor, and in the upper right hand corner is their leadership value. So, so if we can focus here, come on. There's Banks, he has a leadership value of 1 and a movement allowance of 12. So, that's pretty much that for the Union. Looks like we have what? Pardon me. Looks like we have some, I don't know, you'd call those, well, let's look them up. Let's, let's be thorough here. Supply counters are the ones where the rifles are stacked. The letters are stacking counters, so I guess you can keep track of your various stacks. We've got some sort of fortification counters. We also have destruction counters. Turn marker. Pretty much the same thing for the Confederates. Uh, the wagon, yeah, rip my rules there. The wagon are wagon counters. Um, is there any examples of those? I guess I can look up there. There at the top of the Union. I don't know if I can bend it right. And we have column markers. Uh, I don't know. Just all sorts of markers on this super thick cardstock. Yes, these are sturdy. Um, they look like they could be a pain to punch out, though. Anyway, let's move on. We'll move on to the map. Here we have a picture of the map. We have a turn record chart at the top. Just a general point record um, chart below it. There are holding boxes on the top left, top right, for Union and Confederate forces. I guess that's what you use the uh, letter markers for to indicate. Um, where a stack is located. Do a quick little map tour, I guess. I don't know anything about the Shenandoah or the Shenandoah campaigns. Um, I bought the game for collector's purposes and to play it, but mostly for collector's purposes and just to see if I can glean a little more information from the game on the actual campaign itself. So, let's see. Like I say, I don't know much about it. Shenandoah Mountains, Harrisburg, Port Republic, Waynesboro. Those are all names I'm semi-familiar with. Charlottesville. Move over here. Sperryville. Manassas Gap. Warrington. Well, must be the Warrington Turnpike, maybe? I don't know. It's all semi-familiar. And, of course, we have... Harper's Ferry, Shepherdstown, Winchester, or Cedarsville, or Cedarville, sorry, Kernstown. On up here, anything exciting? Not much up there. Unless, of course, you live there, then I suppose it has some meaning. Oh, Woodstock. We have New Market. Like I said, we've seen Harrisonville, Luray, and that's pretty much it. So, not a whole lot to the map. Um, graphics are serviceable, as they like to say. The keywords today are it's serviceable, it's functional. And in case you're not happy or you want to order some more games, here is a catalog that you can uh, write to Battleline and uh, get replacements and all that stuff.
although I'm pretty sure your letter will stay in the dead letter box for quite a while if you try to do so. Anyway, since they're no longer uh, in business. Well, that takes care of a uh, quick look at Shiloh, or Shiloh, Shenandoah. How long have I been saying Shiloh? Well, anyway, um, this is the game Shenandoah from Battleline. And with that, um, you can tell I'm a little rusty. It's been a few months. Um, with that, I'll complete this video and we'll see what else I can dig up in the um, ancient musty vaults of my game collection. See ya.